Okay, so you want to head to reshade.me and it's going to bring you to the reshade website where you can get the latest version of reshade. So you want to click on this purple download button and bring you down here to the bottom. As you can see the latest release and uh, information. So you just want to click on the green button and it'll download a small little kind of package for you to run. So once that's done you should have a um, reshade setup 3 0.0 um, application so what you want to do is right click on that and run it as administrator and um, this will just make sure everything goes smoothly so you'll be presented with this little window and here it'll highlight select game so you want to click on that and navigate to your game that you want to inject reshade 3 into for me it's bf1 so i'm going to click that and i'm going to hit open and then it's going to select select rendering api and i know it's a directx 11 plus game so i tick directx 3d 10 plus 11 and then it asks me do I want to download a collection of shaders and effects and I want to so I'll click yes and this is pretty quick as you can see and that will download all the kind of shader files that we want so here the next window is a list of all the ones we want to install now I think it's a good idea to uncheck the ones that you're you know you're not going to use but if you're a first time user it can hurt to install them but it can get a bit cluttered with a lot of different effects so I'm going to tick off various ones here that I might not use and um, just choose my kind of favorite ones or the ones that I use most when I'm making presets for games so a lot of a lot of the sharpening effects I'll probably leave on and uh, some of the kind of color effects but there's tons of other good ones in there you know depth of field and, and motion blur depending on the game you want so it's entirely up to you which ones you choose so I'm pretty happy now with this I'll just untick a couple more and uh, should be good to go and then just come down to OK and it should say done and succeeded so now you can close the window and you can get ready to launch the game. Okay, so I'm here in an empty server after launching the game. And um, by rights you should have got the welcome message, kind of grey bar. Um, but here I am in an empty server. So what you want to do is to bring up the in-game menu, you press Shift F2. So there we go. And now you can read this bit about starting reshade, a kind of quick tutorial. You just want to kind of click on continue once you've read that. And the next step is creating a profile. So, a preset, sorry. So you want to click on this little box in the corner with a plus on it. And type in the name you want to call your preset. So I'm just going to call mine BF1 Bopper. And then you just hit the enter key. And it'll load all the effects that you downloaded earlier. And if you click on the collapse all, it'll kind of organize them and collapse all the kind of categories. And then to open them, you just click on the little triangle in the corner and enable the button until there's a kind of blue square highlighted inside. If you carefully look at the screen now you might be able to see the effect kind of on and off. Um, and so it's just a process of then of uh, toggling on the ones you want and then later on we'll play with the values of each one but just to enable them so that they are ready for you to kind of tweak and mess around with later. So curves as you can see will add some kind of darker lights um, fine sharp, there's different kind of modes of sharpening here sometimes you can have too much so it's it's a thing that you can play around with but it really gives you great freedom now with Reshade 3.0 so we'll just go through the various different ones some of the settings are quite low so you won't really notice them too uh, too much but um, things like levels you'll probably notice a big difference it gets darker um, Luma Sharpen will sharpen the, the kind of Luma edges and stuff and SMA should uh, kind of tidy up some of the things we're missing from anti-aliasing and then if I toggle on say Technicolor you can see quite a boost to the c colors, the uh, saturation and uh, so now you want to click on the continue button and what that's done is it's opened up the uh, parameters for kind of tweaking the effects to get the settings the way you want them rather than just on or off so here as you can see if I turn the sharpening all the way up to 2 you can see it makes it quite sharp if you look at the edges of the screen it'll so you want to find your own kind of whatever you like as a balance but for me I'm going to leave it around 800 so it's really just a process then of after you've enabled an effect coming in playing with the values so as you can see chroma has a lot warmer kind of contrast and uh, saturation of colors um, you can just tweak it then and kind of you know if it's too much play around with it um, and there's various other ones in here. Levels obviously will brighten or darken the black point and white point on your screen. So, you know, for getting it just the way you want it, it's a handy little kind of control. Um, and there's a highlight clipping option as well. So if you're 
curious you can play with that. Um, things like Luma Sharpen are quite handy in certain games. They add a little extra crispness to kind of certain textures in the game and um, overall can be a useful um, effect to play with. Um, SMAA is quite handy if you're looking for a kind of not perfect anti-aliasing by any means but it's a pretty good budget solution to get rid of most kind of obvious jaggies in a game. Um, you'll still get them on certain things but I mean it's far less performance intensive. Um, we also have Technicolor here so you can play with the values maybe desaturated a little bit so say it's too strong as you can see that's really saturated less saturated. Now this will depend on your monitor and your kind of Windows color settings and all that, but um, those that want to get a kind of unique look for their game, they can. Um, and then Vibrance, again, is just more kind of saturation and um, tweaking of various different color settings. But um, yeah, the new in game interface is really handy. It gives some good stuff. So uh, once you're done, you just kind of come down here to the bottom and uh, click on Finish. And then it should kind of finish off your preset and then. They're still here to be toggled and tw tweaked, but next tab, if you click on the settings, you get some important stuff here. So for effects toggle key, if you have a particular one you like to use, you can put it in here, but I like to stick with scroll lock. Works for me. Um, and then you can mess around with the input. As you can see, if you go off the reshade window, it actually registers game input, whereas if you go block all input when overlay is visible, it means you can go outside the edges of the actual reshade 3.02 without moving in game. Um, you can also restart the tutorial here um, if you kind of forget a step. There's some other hand saving areas for uh, screenshots and the format. And here under user interface, you can actually tweak the various colors of the background to get it the way you kind of like it to match your setup or whatever it might be. So a nice little feature that's been added um, that's kind of implemented quite well. Uh, you also have an FPS or a clock uh, thing that you can enable in the thing. Uh, inside here so uh, yeah and you can collapse all the uh, things down with little triangles into small tabs again in this section you've got some kind of geeky stuff about texture information but if you're you know into that it's kind of handy and then just some information about some of the tools and, and other bits of code and stuff that were used in the making of it so it's a really good tool I could spend ages going into more depth I might make another video a little bit later on but um, just to show you you can see you know, it's quite a difference if I toggle it off. If you look at the edge of the trench, you'll see quite a few jaggies. Um, and then when I enable, it's a bit smoother. You know, quite noticeable, really. And um, the colors are a bit too intense, obviously. But it's just a basic thing. But BF1 can be quite dark in places. Naturally, just the game itself, the kind of gritty of the World War One environment. So, you know, finding a kind of nice balance for yourself using Reshade 3 can can help uh, things out a lot. As you can see, it's detect color that's really controlling those um, very bright colors. Um, but yeah, just it's really fun to play with now that it's all in game. You don't have to have it on a second monitor or all tab out of the game or play even in windowed mode. Um, it seems to be pretty compatible with most of the kind of more modern games that I've tried. I haven't really gone back and tried it with some of my really old catalog of games, but um, I definitely will play around a bit more. So. Yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope this video helps you guys out, kind of get the understanding of the basics of it. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you need any help or stuff like that. Bye.